Mama et Flavo Bonsoir I want to acknowledge the presence of the Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, Chairman of the United Workers' Party. <laughs> Honorable Gail Rickerbert, Deputy Political Leader and Leader of the Opposition. <laughs> the Honorable Spider Montoot, the Deputy Political Leader. <laughs> the Honorable Arson James. <laughs> the Honorable Guy Joseph. The Honorable Andy Daniel. I want to recognize the President of WIA and also the President of our Youth Arm, who gave, I thought, a fabulous presentation tonight. And I want to also recognize the many other members of our executive that are on the head table and also to join in my fellow St. Lucians and Flebo Flabos to recognize the stalwarts off to our left, and I want to thank them for their continued support of United Workers' Party. I want to share the best wishes that have been made this evening in celebrating the 50th anniversary of the United Workers' Party. Happy birthday, United Workers' Party. I want to acknowledge all the people who have made sacrifices for the United Workers Party over the last 50 years. Not just the political leaders and the ministers and the representatives that we can remember, but all the people who formed executives on constituency branches, the people that worked tirelessly as agents, as canvassers, in all of the constituencies of United Workers Party. All the people who have worked in the civil service and have stayed quietly and strong in support of the United Workers Party. And I want to recognize and give appreciation to the thousands of St. Lucians who are living abroad, who turn into their radio stations and check on the internet every single day to hear what their flabos have been up to and that their support has never dwindled and I want to say to them, thank you, thank you, thank you. We have heard a lot this evening about what this great party has achieved. It is a remarkable run, not only in the annals of history of St. Lucia, but in the history of the Caribbean. I challenge anyone to tell me any government or governments in the Caribbean that have done a better job for their people than what the United Workers Party has done for St. Lucia. It is impossible to travel around this island, the fair Helen, and see and not see what this party has achieved not only in the physical infrastructure, but the number of young people who have been educated and who have gone on to be exemplary citizens of this great country, St. Lucia. And the last one, and I have to give her special recognition because of obviously her, part, her family affiliation, but what Nina Compton did is a remarkable story. But my fellow St. Lucians, all is not good. What we have to do is to remember the past, but for that to give us strength on facing the future. Unfortunately, the efforts of Sir John and Alan Bousquet and George Mallet and Henry Girodi and the thousands of people who've made contributions to this great party are not going to help us moving forward. We are the ones who have to make that. We have to chart a new course for our country. 
we can be strengthened in knowing that we have done it before. And we are going to have to do it again. But what we are facing, we have never faced before. Sir John never had to face the kind of Labour Party that we're having to face today. A people, a group of individuals, and I do not put all Labour rights in that group, but a core group of Labour people who have chosen to lie and be deceitful and to destroy the livelihoods of thousands of St. Lucians. When the Labour Party was in opposition during 2006 to 2011, they had time to reflect on what took place. They did not give the United Workers Party one minute to breathe. When we had the recession, which was the worst recession that has happened in our lifetimes, one in which countries lost billions of jobs, sorry, billions of dollars, and millions and millions of jobs were lost in 2009 and 2010. They said we were not allowed to use that as an excuse. When we had Hurricane Thomas, which is an event that was measured, that this is an, a catastrophe, one in 186 years. They said, this is nothing, and you cannot use this as an excuse. When we had the great drought, they said, this is nothing, and you cannot use this as an excuse. Time after time, we would go into Parliament. Kenny, Philip Pierre, Robert Lewis would look at us on the other side and said, don't make excuses about what's going on in the rest of the world. Fix the problems. We don't want to hear what's taking place outside the world. The Labour Party had five years to put together their blueprint for growth. Five years in opposition, looking at what took place in the world. So Kenny Anthony and the Labour Party cannot say that when they came into power, they did not know what they were going to find. They knew damn well what they were going to find. Because it was on TV and it was in the newspapers every single day as to what had, had transpired. Just this last week, the president of Seychelles was here and he had a meeting with the Honorable Prime Minister in which he said he was going to share his experiences of the recession in which Seychelles went into a debt of GDP of over a hundred percent. They borrowed over a billion dollars to be able to salvage their economy that was ravaged by the recession. But the best experience that Dr. Anthony could have had is what happened here in St. Lucia. Because while every single economy in the Caribbean went into negative growth and had double digits increases in debt, St. Lucia, little St. Lucia, continued to grow. And we did not grow the debt by any great means. So when Dr. Anthony says that when he came back into office, he found a catastrophe, he lied. That is not the truth. He found a country that had become the largest economy in the OECS in the worst of times. He found a government that had made prudent decisions, that did not just use the excuse of Thomas, use the excuse of any other catastrophe in order to borrow money, but we prioritized. We made tough decisions and we did not implement the projects that we had to. We implemented the projects that we must have done. And we did those that were going to grow the economy and maintain jobs, jobs, jobs. In five years, the Labour Party indicated that when they came into power, they would spend a hundred million dollars in order to fix up the infrastructure of Thomas. I don't remember the Baudouange Bridge 
sorry, the, bon the Bonterre Bridge being part of the Hurricane Thomas. I see that the Shock Bridge is still needing fixing. They've only just started the Bordewange Bridge. They have not even begun close to fixing up the Bardeal. And the numerous amount of feeder roads and drains and rivers that have not been desilted. So they have not even begun the work in two and a half years. They said they were going to create jobs, jobs, jobs. But they did not. Instead, they lost jobs, jobs, jobs. Since the Labour Party has come into government in 2011, end of 2011, St. Lucians have lost 4,000 jobs. 4,000 people don't have any money to bring home to their family. They said that they were going to reduce the debt to GDP of St. Lucia from 71% to 60%. But we have recently found out that the debt to GDP in St. Lucia has soared to 89%. They said that they were going to eliminate the deficit that government was running. We are going to have a record deficit of over $250 million, meaning that government is going to spend $250 million more than they earned in taxes. Where are we going? The Labour Party continues to prove to all of us that they cannot deliver on St. Lucia's needs. My fellow St. Lucians, We are in for some difficult times. The Prime Minister in his New Year's address said that the worst days are behind us. Again, I do not believe him. Every single economic indicator says that the worst days are still ahead of us. Where is the investment that he said he promised? He said under a Labour Party that people would be knocking on the door to come to St. Lucia. This is the same man that when United Workers Party was in power, said that he would have written to any investor coming to St. Lucia and tell them not to come into St. Lucia. What kind of man would do that? They said that they would do things to help the poor. But they have done the opposite. The subsidies on rice, flour, and sugar, where are they? VAT on medicine, VAT on services. And you heard the announcement here tonight that more than likely in the budget, the civil servants are going to be given the choice of either a 10% pay cut or a 10% cut in number of employees. I almost guarantee you that there's going to be an increase in taxes. Already, we've seen that they've increased the taxes on tourism. And they have dared now once again to put taxes on the cruise industry. I fear for St. Lucia. Because every country in this region that has put taxes on the cruise industry has been followed by a reduction in the number of ships coming to St. Lucia after we fought so hard against the other Caribbean islands to maintain the numbers that we had. And it was under the United Workers Party that we went from 350,000 cruise ship arrivals to 700,000. We doubled the number of cruise ship arrivals. And Kenny Anthony and his party is about to throw that away. What on earth is the Labour Party doing with our traditional friends? The countries that have provided us income and shelter throughout the history of our country. I speak of the United States of America, Canada, England, Taiwan. How many of us have families who are sending us monies from America, sending us monies from Canada, sending us monies from England? How many of our children have been educated in those countries? 
How many of us depend on going up there on a regular basis? Why would you jeopardize that? In the last two weeks, the Labour Party has chosen to make two historic votes. One vote was at the OAS Assembly, the Organization of American States, in which the Panamanian government invited the deputy leader of opposition of Panama to come up to the OAS to speak to the members of the OAS about what was taking place. A resolution was put on the floor to deny her the ability to speak in public. And our government won't tell us this, but we voted against allowing her to speak. A country that professes to be a democratic country. A constitution that says that everybody is entitled to have a voice and an opinion. That we would have voted against that opportunity to allow an opposition member to speak. The second vote that the, part, the Labour Party will not talk about is that there was a vote at the UN. A resolution to discuss the referendum that took place in Crimea. The resolution passed, but unfortunately, our country abstained from voting. I can tell you a decision that the Europeans must be looking at and asking themselves, what on earth is going on in St. Lucia? We are just on the verge of getting visa access to the entire Europe. Many of you, particularly from this constituency, will remember the charity of the Europeans through Lomi Convention after Lomi Convention to build feeder roads and irrigation systems and to support our banana industry. And this is the gratitude we repay them with. Why the Labour Party continues to insist that the relationship with Venezuela and the gifts that we receive from Alba, that there's no price to it. Fellow St. Lucians, there is a very heavy price to that money. And Kenny Anthony had it right, but he had the country wrong when he made reference to Taiwan me, Taiwan's money being blood money. The money he's receiving from Alba is blood money. And the opposition in Venezuela has just said that. They have showed a picture of the Honorable Kennedy Anthony along with the people who have been murdered in Venezuela and saying you have blood on your hands. Is that how we want St. Lucians to be known? But you know, Venezuela is a country that is on the verge of bankruptcy. A country in which 39 Venezuelans have been killed. A country in which the opposition has been arrested. Two leaders of the opposition and three mayors have been arrested. Is a country in which airlines are stopped flying to because they cannot get paid money. And then you had the Prime Minister of Dominica come to St. Lucia and say how great Kenny Anthony is and what a wonderful man he is, and how we should be getting more money from Venezuela. I say to the Honorable Skerritt, if he loves Kenny Anthony so much, take him back to Dominica with you. But doesn't this all sound too familiar? Does it not sound familiar? A government that oppresses its own people? that it chooses to take the opposition and throw them into court on baseless charges? I keep on saying, if what I did was so wrong, why haven't you not taken me to a criminal court? Why have you taken me to a civil court? Why are you taking innocent people from Babano, people who have contributed their time to their country, to their constituency, and you take these people and you put them in, into court? the leaders of Babano, because the Honorable Ezekiel Joseph did not just go and select people that were members and supportive of his party. He put people on the council that were the leaders of the community. And we sit innocently, quietly, and watch this take place. Look what the people 
in Venezuela. Look what the people in Egypt, look what the people in Syria are having to do to fight for democracy. I say to you, let us not wait too long before it's too late. What kind of country do we want to live in? Do we want to live in a country that is oppressed? In which we become scared to say what we believe? The day that it will come that we be scared to come out and wear our yellow shirts? There are many St. Lucians who have already reached that place. Many St. Lucians who are in fear of voicing their opinion in, order, in, in, in case they become victimized. We must not tolerate this for much longer. Every time the Labour Party comes into power, what do we see? The debt goes up. In 1997, when the Labour Party came into power, after Sir John and his party laid down an incredible foundation, dams, the Rodney Bay, highways, airports, schools, hospitals, he left a debt of GDP of 37%. In some of the most prosperous years of the world, between 2001 and 2006, the Labour Party only grew the economy by 1.5% and increased our debt from 37% to 67%. In the worst of economic times when we came into power, with some of the most devastating natural disasters this country has ever faced, we only increased the debt by 5%. And we were able to sustain a positive economic growth rate every single year that we were in office. The saddest thing about Dr. Anthony, and I warned my people from Sufer when we were campaigning, I said, don't judge a man by what he says, judge a man by what he does. How many times has Dr. Candy Anthony come to Sufer and to other constituencies in, in St. Lucia and say what? I have a special place in my heart for you. That heart is so dark and so cold, I fear anybody who has to go into that heart. In Soufrere, I watched the people suffer. If it had not been for us to break down the bridge in Soufrere, would the people be enjoying a two-way bridge in Soufrere today? No. Would the youth of Soufrere be able to enjoy playing sports at nighttime on the lights? No. Would the people in Fonce et Jacques be able to enjoy a multi-purpose complex? No. Would the people in Diamond still have water? No. How could you be a man who has the people's concerns in your heart and do nothing for them? This is not a man who cares. This is a man who talks the talk but cannot walk the walk. I have heard Many people question who is Alan Shastny? Yes. My parents, like many of your parents, were poor. I know that that's hard for people to believe. My father came from a family with nine children and he was one of the last. My father never got the benefit of a university degree. My mother studied nursing in England in order for her to be able to leave poverty from Ireland. My parents worked two jobs and worked very hard in order to give me and my sister an opportunity to go to university. An opportunity to be able to travel the world and to learn and experience many things. My father opened up many doors to me, but my father always taught me the value of hard work. My father said, I'm happy to pay for your education, son, but you must work. So every single summer from the time I was 15 years of age, I worked on the ships or I worked in my father's office. I started working as an economist when I came back to St. Lucia. 
And I want to ask you the question. When I became an economist in the Ministry of Planning, nobody asked me if I was not solution. When I went and played basketball in the gardens, and I became the captain of the national team for St. Lucia. Nobody asked me if I was St. Lucia. When I became the director of tourism in St. Lucia and started the St. Lucia Jazz Festival and got sandals to invest in St. Lucia, nobody asked me if I was St. Lucia. When I worked at Air Jamaica and I got Air Jamaica to fly to St. Lucia and got us to invest EC Express and based it here in St. Lucia, Nobody asked me if I was St. Lucia. When I came back home and I opened up my own hotel and invested my money here in St. Lucia, nobody asked me if I was St. Lucia. When I became the Minister of Tourism here and we doubled the revenue of, of tourism, then we brought The Bachelor here, we brought Boxing in Paradise here, we brought to the world to the doorsteps of St. Lucia, we made St. Lucia a household name. Nobody asked me if I was St. Lucia. I live and breathe being St. Lucia. Most importantly, my parents instilled in me a love for this country. But you know what? Some parents were not so lucky. After working very hard, they were not able to make enough money to send their children to school. They could not fulfill the dreams that they had for themselves and for their family. They could not provide their children with what they knew they ought to have. Unfortunately, there are too many of us who are like that today. I. Alan Chastney, I'm here because I despise poverty. I cry and I anguish over the many young St. Lucians who I see that are so gifted and so talented, but are not given the opportunity to be able to explore that opportunity. I am concerned as to how fast our country is becoming impoverished. We graduated under Sir John and United Workers' Party to become a middle-income country. But fellow St. Lucians, the economic indicators are that we're going backwards. And we soon may find ourselves to be being a developing country once again. But the difference is that the world has changed. There are too many countries who have given up the idea of aid. Too many countries are depending on you to help yourself and are not prepared to reach out a hand in the ways they had before. We must look for some alternative ways. And how are we going to solve these problems? It is said that you should not trust me because I have economic power. But how many people obtain political power in order to get economic power? One thing you do not have to fear from me is that I strive to be in political power to take anything from you solutions. I want for nothing. I want for nothing that St. Lucia can provide me. What I want for is a country of happy people. A country of people that can accomplish their dreams. A country in which parents can work hard and take care of their children and own the house and the roof over their head. I want a country in which when people want to travel, they don't have to get a visa, that people love and respect solutions all over the world. That is the country that I want. That is what I want. I want nothing for myself. I only want to see these, these, see these things for St. Lucia. Because if I live in a country like that, 
then my children and my children's children and my children's children will be able to grow up in this great country that I got to grow up in and that many of you got to grow up in and we are blessed but let us not destroy it but if we allow the Labour Party to continue in office they are going to do exactly that here is the tough part because I'm not talking about the past anymore the past is there for us to remember and to cherish but to succeed we must become part of a team you can be assured in United Workers Party that no one person is going to make the decisions by themselves that this party is a party of strong-minded strong leadership and people who believe in values that collectively we are going to make the difference the days where one Sir John can make the difference those days are gone no one individual can ever replace Sir John it is going to take a team of people to do so but for a team to work together they must have mutual respect but here's where your part comes in you cannot vote once every five years in a secret ballot and think that that's going to make a difference you have to become active members of your party you must go to constituency branch meetings you must put your ideas on the table and share them and have it being criticized by your fellow colleagues the United Workers Party of today is one of open government that we are no longer going to take policies by a select few and impose that on the many we want the ideas to come from the many and it be implemented by a select few we are going to reverse it right around this United Workers Party is a democratic party this party believes in decisions through consensus but decisions by consensus my fellow St. Lucians is not easy because it's difficult to go to a meeting and, and be emotional about an idea and that when that idea is voted on the majority of people do not support it you cannot turn your back and leave you must embrace it because you have to trust that the decisions of the collective of the majority is the right decision and if that decision turns out to be the wrong decision the next time there's an important decision the people in that group will now remember he's the man who said we should have done it a different way you must earn your spurs in this party when people say Alan Chastney is a newcomer yes I've been here since 2007 but when I was called a junior minister when I was called selected I never complained because that's part of the process I attended meetings I took my licks I listened to people I learned and people now have learned that I have some good ideas and, you've grown. Yes. and I have a partnership in a group of people that share those ideas and that we are committed to taking St. Lucia out of the poverty that it's in Poverty has to be our enemy. Somebody told me tonight, the only expensive education is ignorance. Well, they said, no, if you think education is expensive, see, try, try ignorance. Any political party that tries to keep their people ignorant is not a party for this country. You have been put on warning. Spider has put you on warning. Guy Joseph has put you on warning. Gail Rickerbert has put you on warning. Ezekiel Joseph has put you on warning. The president of our youth group has put you on warning. The president of our women's group has put you on warning. And now I am putting you on warning. The time has come for us to come together. The time has come to show people things that they don't want to listen to. We continuously advise the Labour Party of things they should and should not do. They don't listen. The time is coming soon in which we're going to have to show our strength. The budget is going to be a fiasco. The budget is going to show that this government bluffed the people of St. Lucia in the last budget. Because the variance between what they projected and what actually is going to happen 
what happens is going to be a disaster. Just this weekend in the newspaper, the Bank of Nova Scotia published its balance sheet. In 2012, they earned $33 million. In 2013, they earned $11 million. They've written off $30 million in bad debt. The Bank of St. Lucia has written off over $150 million just last year in bad debt. The banks are losing money. That is a bad sign. You have a government in power that will tell you anything. Take the case we just showed with Emma Hippolyt and the government. They argued that if they got into power, that they would take away the machines. The first thing they did is they would take away the machines. Yet the machines are there. And there's more of them. Do you know why? Because the government is earning $3 million a month. And here's the crime. Here is the crime. The crime is that when they built Bo Sinju, they borrowed the money from the Bank of Nova Scotia and could not repay the money. And they ended up giving the Lottery of St. Lucia to a Canadian company. And when that Canadian company ran the lottery, all they gave to the people of St. Lucia was $25,000 a month in order to pay the salaries of the people in the lottery. It was Spider Montu and United Workers Party that brought a new group of people in that offered us a new dispensation. And that by the time we left office, we had just started to earn $500,000 a month. We're now earning $3 million a month that would go to help the education and sports of the youth of St. Lucia, all by ourselves. But they're not telling you that. They have not even told you how they're spending the money. It's like they keep every single thing a secret. And isn't it ironic that Treasure Bay, which is being represented by Peter Foster, who is a Speaker of the House, is taking the government to court because they're saying that the lotteries, the, the, um, the, the slot machines, should have come in under the Gaming Commission and not the lottery. But how come Peter Foster, as the Speaker of the House, is not allowing us to speak about Grindberg? in which the Prime Minister then and the Prime Minister now signed the agreement by himself with no permission of his cabinet, with no permission from his parliament, and never asked the Governor General to give a mining license. How come that is not going under investigation? How come they have not chosen to take that to court? But instead, what have they done? They're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars in illegal fees and they're telling us nothing about what's taking place in the case and are saying that we are not entitled to hear the information. I'm putting Kenny Anthony and the Labour Party on notice that when they come to budget this time, they better be prepared to answer the questions as to where the money is going with Grindberg and who is going to pay the price. And if we lose the case, who? is going to pay the 500 million US dollars. I hope Dr. Anthony has answers to those questions. Yes. Mamai Flabo, yes. are you ready? Yes. We are ready and we're getting stronger every day. And I say to you, we will stand up toe to toe with you. We will challenge the, United, the Labour Party every day from now on. They will not be able to sleep. They will not be able to rest. And every day, my phone is ringing with people who want to run for United Workers of Party. There are people who are saying enough is enough and I want to get involved. I'm asking all of you, bring out your family, bring out your friends, and even some people who become your enemies. I'm asking you, put that aside and bring them out and join the train. The train is leaving. Thank you very much.